Hey, John Scullin here, and I'm with Aaron Tazrick, the owner of Kodiak Emergency Vehicles. He's our Demir's Braun Crestline dealer for the state of Michigan. And today we have behind us the Detroit Fire and EMS Chief XL, brand new, ready for delivery. And Aaron and I are gonna discuss some of the things that are standard on a Chief XL, and then we're gonna get into what things were customized for Detroit Fire. So as I walk around it, I always like to start from the front of the vehicle, walk all the way around, and then enter, enter in from the side. But Really from the, from the front side, it's gonna be an F450. This is a four by two diesel. Uh, there's many different chassis options that, you can, that are available uh, on the Chief XL. <clears throat> this one has a 360 camera and we'll talk through as you're going through and also check it out when you get on the in inside. Uh, uh, Braun as standard is gonna have a hidden unlock switch inside. And then on this option, I don't know if you can see it in the, in the video, but they have uh, the air horns are mounted on the, on the fenders. Um, other than that, most everything else is, is going to be standard on the front. If I look up at the top, uh, it's going to have an FRC um, spotlight. This is something that they just recently had changed to uh, to test out FRC. Uh, these are going to be code three lights on, uh, as that are uh, on the city of Detroit. So that's their specification. Wheeling lights are standard. Seven across the front, I believe, is standard. Yep. Um, and then the the AC condenser on the on the outside of the uh, modules also uh, not standard. That's a that's an upgrade too to give more uh, cooling capacity. Yeah, part of the premium HVACs, which we're launching across all the lines and providing more information about. There's so many more choices available now on AC than when we started doing this. It's it's pretty exciting. So now we're going to talk about the interior of the cab. Go ahead, Aaron. So as standard, liquid spring would be standard, but uh, with City of Detroit, they hide the liquid spring um, console or controller up underneath. Uh, you have an all aluminum uh, custom console. So there's this really customized, um, but all aluminum is the main thing that I point out because a lot of the other guys won't even have a console or will have a wood console that's not customized. Uh, also um, sprayed with uh, like a multi-spec spray. The uh, multiplex electrical system, which is the Braun Master Tech electrical system, um, also in here, you're gonna see Havis mounts that, uh, that we have added to that are specific to the city of Detroit for their computer. Uh, it has an EQ2B siren uh, for, their, for their standard siren. It also has a Vista lock, uh, which is set up to, um, if you set up out of your seat and open the door, it'll lock it so that you can't go into park unless you, or into drive unless you put the code in. Nice. Um, and then uh, the 360 camera, which you can see uh, in there as well. And I think it, what's most important on all of that is you, you hit it twice, the customization of the consoles. Uh, every customer has different needs. And uh, as soon as I opened the door on this one, I was like, wow, they've got lanyards for the air horns. They've got the Vista lock. They've got the EQ2B, as you said. And looks like we have room to accommodate just about any computer mount on the market. Yeah, and one of the things that's the most, you know, really that people don't think about is, is armrests. Most Fords <laughs> don't come with armrests. And, uh, you know, to put the option in is armrests. The other thing now, just looking at it too is, uh, Braun also recovered all the seats uh, to a vinyl seat, uh, which is specific for the city of Detroit. Right. For durability and uh, carcinogens, all yes. the other reasons people don't want cloth in the cab. Okay, well, that's a great looking cab. We'll move on to the compartments now and see what's going on on the street side. So as standard in a Chief XL, the O2 is in the, in the rear back rear. Um, I'd say 99% of what we sell uh, the O2s up in the front. I can explain too that the, the O2 being in the rear, I think from the bronze side, uh, they were looking at um, really most of your weight and everything is on this side. Um, as their standard, they put their O2 into the uh, back rear um, for to help out with some of the uh, braking and the, the, the um, weights, weights and balances. Weights. Okay. So um, we'll talk about the easy O2, uh, easy O2 lift. So this is a brawn option that the uh, city of Detroit went with. Um, really pretty slick. Yep, it's just up and down with uh, being able to load your O2 on the, on the door um, versus I think that this option is about $1,000 cheaper than or less expensive than the... Uh, um, like a Zico. Zico. Oh yeah, an automated yes. lift. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so, a little more simple, also, easier to operate. Also, something that comes with this is that when uh, when the door is open, your 
your um, liquid spring suspension will come back up or will not drop as a safety feature with having that open. Oh, that's a good idea. So we don't crush any feet or wedge the, the lift. Yep, and as standard, usually there's a divider and a shelf in here, which is taken out when you put the EZO2 lift in. Okay, other than that, a shelf and uh, pretty simple for that compartment. We'll move on down to OSS2. You wanna talk about the handles for us? Real quickly with the Everhard door handles, um, it's they're free floating, meaning that if uh, if uh, they're locked, um, that they'll they'll float. So it's not putting a bunch of binding on okay. any of the internal mechanisms. Yeah. Also with these, you know, we see the, these are standard as a on the uh, brawn, and we see a lot of the competition using them as an option to to upgrade to. But uh, you know, where we are with cold, it fits the gloved hand, and uh, just really easy to use. So for the city of Detroit, I think. I think as standard in, a, in the uh, Chief XL is going to be one shelf. Um, this, they do have a uh, Vanner inverter. Um, they do have pull wires and everything in here so that they can, if any other electronics and stuff, uh, want to fit in here. And also throughout the body, uh, they have tubes with pull wires also. So also as standard is uh, kind of like a truck bed liner interior. Um, the strip LED lighting on the side is going to be um, an, uh, an upgrade that the city of Detroit went with. Standard's gonna be LED uh, round lights uh, on each level. And then also as an upgrade, they went with a, a turtle tile on the bottom. Okay. So they get the durability for all the tools and everything they're throwing in, and they've got plenty of light to be able to see for all three shelves. Really good setup for that. And uh, as we can see, it'll hold a lot of equipment. Great. So real quick here, as a couple options that they went with is, Standard's gonna be an aluminum fenderette. Uh, this is a rubber fenderette. Another thing too that Braun tries to get uh, away from is that any fasteners uh, that are that are touching or going through different uh, different types of aluminum or anything. But uh, so these are VHB taped on. Also, as a uh, option, is the City of Detroit went with um, poly rub uh, the poly rub rails. Yeah, I uh, saw that. Yeah, so poly from their side is uh, is kind of an upgrade that they went to, uh, kind of an aluminum. It's not really a C channel, but a, an aluminum channel with uh, reflective tape is what's going to be standard on the brawn. Okay, yeah, and that's a great idea, especially in a big city like uh, Detroit. I imagine they bump into things once in a while, yes. or things bump into them. So uh, those are going to be a little more forgiving than the metal. Uh, and we all know stainless uh, wheel fenders aren't very forgiving. Well, and what, since I'm here too, one of the things that they changed was they went with painted uh, rims instead of the standard on the F-Series with the Braun is going to be aluminum rim. I see some special options in here. Tell us about the uh, Street Side 3. Yeah, so as standard OSS 3 would be inside-outside access a little bit taller than this. So to match their uh, current fleet, <clears throat> this is only going to hold a steer chair. Some stuff behind it, you can see the, um, the compressor for the air horns and, you know, again, uh, the the Gator Hide interior. The one thing too is, is they are sweep out compartments, meaning they don't um, they don't go down, which some manufacturers you'll see are they they'll they'll go down and uh, can collect water and, and uh, other debris and stuff and start to eat away the bottom of your compartments. So easy to clean out. Yep. Great. So tell us a little bit about the back end here. What do we got going on? So from difference from standard on what they're going to do is is or what they've changed is uh, the cast. Um, a license plate holder as standard. Usually, right. uh, uh, Braun would, would will have that over here without the cast. And really, I think it's also to keep away from having dissimilar metals touching. And a lot of times, you'll start seeing the this start to flake away, which isn't a Braun product. It's just a customer uh, supplier's product. So that's something that's different. Uh, the rear tow hooks are are not standard. That's a that's an option that they went with. Flip up bumper is is standard. Um, as standard, instead of having the, uh, the uh, tow hooks, are going to be hooks up underneath. Um, you know, really what we see for options on the rear, you know, they do have the, again, the 360 camera, but Braun will have a standard as a backup camera. Uh, they do have a center brake light uh, that's a little bit different, and then uh, they do have brake override in the, uh, in the window level light. So I see we have a rather large curbside three here. Heck, I could live in there practically. Yes. So this is uh, really, I think it's OSS four from oh, from bronze side. Yeah, that's right. And it's it's as standard. This is what you'll see in the standard uh, prints. It's going to be this would be your O2 compartment. Um, usually, when you move this the O2 up to the front with a standard compartment, then you'd usually have where you'll have a backboard over on the side, 
stair chair down below and then sea collars. As you could tell on the other side, City of Detroit puts their stair chair in their in the other rear compartment. So this side they're using for backboards and then they have jump bags that are going into each one of these and then just some extra storage underneath. That's unique. You don't see a lot of departments put jump bags back here, but with all that extra room, it's great. Now, is this compartment custom sized or is this, this a is, standard Chief XL this, compartment? This is a standard compartment width wise and height wise, uh -huh. but as far as where everything is and the shelving and okay. everything, that's a that's a, a customized compartment. Yeah, so even on the standard model, they're gonna be a great size compartment and then they can configure it the way they want. Yes. Excellent. Now we're gonna talk about one of the best features of a Braun, the Easy Glide door. Yeah, so the Braun Easy Glide door, um, again, like I said, we, I think it's about 99% of what we sell. Actually, I don't know if I've ever sold a, a non-easy glide door. Um, a lot of people really like the, like the door. So it's uh, the big thing too that I get feedback from is the safety be, to be able to look out to see if any traffic's coming. Also, you know, where we have a lot of rural areas, if you're on the, on the side, you got big ditches so that if that door was open, they're also going in out of their ALS a lot, so having the easy glide door uh, really helps them. City Detroit, it also helps them out with a lot of the smaller uh, stations oh. to uh, be able to get in and out and uh, not have any issues there. One of the uh, options that they went with was a keypad on the side, so this is a City Detroit option. Okay, great. So I, I definitely see the safety aspect uh, coming in and out of the ambulance. It's like you've got an extra three or four feet to swing open and look around. So. I, I know why this is so popular and why everybody gets it. It's a great, uh, a great feature of the brawn and part of the, part of the base DNA. So we really have to emphasize our sales on the advantages of the sliding door, right? So uh, standard ALS is gonna be a little bit taller than this. City of Detroit wanted to go uh, with a shorter door, so it's customized specific to them. And you know, on the, when you're looking at the interior, usually they're just, I think they have a stool and stuff that they're using up underneath. And then they have the inside outside access for their for the ALS side, um, which is going to have a ROM roll up door oh, on the interior. Nice. So um, but again, as we get into in the inside, you'll see that the the whole front area has been totally customized for the right use. Yeah, I noticed that whole bulkhead wall is different. I'm excited to take a look in there and uh, see what they're using that for. So there's a lot of things that are customized on the interior of the Braun, but just in general, a, uh, <clears throat> the brawn interior is all aluminum welded interior. Uh, when you look at some that are aluminum, you'll see that they're bolted together or uh, they could have a VHV taper bolted into the, into the body. And from, a, from the brawn side, it's um, also welded into the body. So it, it really becomes part of that whole solid body construction, um, part of the uh, lifetime warranty uh, of the body. You know, the interior cabinets are also part of the bo that body. And also it creates <clears throat> um, some safety features like the crumple zones, uh, meaning that if you were to get in an accident or anything was to happen, it's going to, instead of transferring that energy through the entire body, it's going to uh, really create a crumple zone so that it doesn't, doesn't cause any issues with that. Um, also solid uh, um, um, surface countertops. Um, and then all the aluminum also is, uh, is a multi-spec. Uh, uh, over top versus a lot of the times if it's an aluminum interior from some of the competition, it's gonna be uh, Formica, which is a wood product over top of that aluminum, which really is gonna crack after a while. Uh, anywhere that Braun can keep it uh, seamless or not adding a, another piece of aluminum somewhere, they do that as well. And then anything that has, uh, that's, that, they also have rounded corners uh, that are welded to, to, uh, to help out with some of the safety. Yeah, we talked about safety. It's such a big aspect of our job. But we're constantly talking to customers about being safe in the ambulance. Of course, we have the, the Braun crash test video that we highlight uh, at shows and we go over with our customers. And I think you hit the nail on the head. It's the safety of not having a cabinet bolted to the wall. It's actually a part of the body. Uh, and I think when people start to process that and realize if they're in the back here and they get hit, they don't have to worry about a cabinet coming off the wall at them. Uh, and and, and even solid. A, and a wood cap, cabinet yeah. at that as well. So a lot of times when I explain to people I'm looking at some of their old uh, rigs and, and tell them that it's a wood interior, they, they're surprised at that and that, uh, that they even make them with the wood interior. Right, and mo <laughs> a lot of our competition still does. Yes. So we, we like to highlight that. So one of the things that's different too is uh, Braun usually has their Vitamax lighting uh, on the sides. 
um, that go down from the top on each side, city of Detroit, because of their the space that they needed. They went with a, uh, a cabinet on, on both sides um, and then full cabinets here. Um, also, so that, that gives them more cabinet space. More cabinet Depth, space. Height, everything. Yep, and you'll see, I don't know if you can see in here or in the pictures, yeah. but uh, they're going to have dividers that are, that are uh, also added inside. Um, this, this cabinet they wanted specific, and again, it was because they were trying to match some of their older fleet so that they did, weren't, uh, so they were putting things in the same space, uh, uh, this cabinet here. Um, everything that they have, or there's, they have a few different places that they have the simplex uh, locks. Um, so if you look at the ALS, usually as standard, I believe it's, it's two, two doors. Um, right. This one's going to have uh, a drawer. Um, uh, non-outside access where they're keeping their drug compart their drugs um also they have another uh cabinet up here that they keep other stuff in uh this one also has an iv warmer uh inside of it yeah, i noticed that when i was uh, taking the pictures and uh that's a michigan requirement correct their als drugs have to be locked separately and not accessible that's from the correct outside. yeah so anything uh it needs to be able to be locked and non-accessible or lockable from the outside as well and you made me realize another strength of brawn you said uh you know, they want the brawn, they want all these features and benefits, and they still had to match some of their cabinetry. And with the customization level of brawn, that's where they mix together. Yeah, and we get that a lot to where it's, you know, it's we're used to having it here, all of our, or, or especially in volunteer departments and stuff where they're uh, jumping from side to side. They would like to have everything that they could in the same location and with a brawn that gives us the, uh, the ability to do that. That's a great point. Um, so a couple of other things. So a Sharps container uh, that's added. Uh, we also added a uh, monitor bracket. Um, the seats, uh, standard seats are usually are the uh, Valor back seats uh, and also a Valor airway seat. Uh, we moved back to uh, the, these, these six point harnesses with the seat backs because they liked the ability to slide back and forth a little bit better than what the Valors were allowing them to. Yes, yeah, so Valor standard on the Chief XL, yes. but they can still choose the other seats. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, the uh, multiplex electrical system. Um, they have theirs. You know, one thing that's that's uh, cool about the multiplex system is you can have the ability to change around how you want the the back to function. So, uh, one of the things that they found that they were having issues with was. Uh, the interior lights coming on when they open the doors, but then getting a patient and then shutting the doors and they, they turned off. So uh, Braun uh, set up a program so that when the ignition comes on, one bank of lights comes on and also uh, their heat and AC will come on with the ignition uh, so they don't have to think about it. And then if they forget to turn their uh, dome lights on, they stay on for them. Yeah, I noticed that <laughs> when I was starting it, you've got dome lights, immediate uh, climate control, and the inverters on to charge all their items because we know in a department that size, especially, they're going to forget to do some of those things. Yep. So it's just another custom customizable option to meet their needs. Yes. Okay, great. Um, you know, striker power load. We're seeing them a lot in in Michigan. That's something that we, you know, from our side, we have to go with a uh, with a change notice eight compliant or change notice. I think it's eight or ten um, compliant. Um, also, we get a lot of uh, different electrical. Uh, you'll see a, a 125 volt with USBs. You know, USBs are a common thing that people are wanting to add. And what I find too is just, it's a lot easier to add a, uh, a an outlet now versus uh, down the road. You, you know, I, <clears throat> I stress that a lot in the training. If you don't add the outlet at the beginning, it's gonna cost a lot more and it's gonna be more inconvenient. And the same thing with coax and other free wires. Uh, you gotta get that information up front, find out what your customer's gonna do with it. and. Nobody's ever complained about an extra outlet, right? No. So, but if you're missing one, they're sure going to notice. Well, that's what I'll put a lot of uh, not only coax and, and and power and everything, but also if there's uh, areas to put uh, pull wires and stuff, so that if they do need to add something down the line, that it does give them the ability to do it very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, there's brake and uh, turn indicators in the rear headliner, and. Sharps and trash at the head yep, of the squad bench. Trash, Very nice. Which one of the things I like too now that standard is is it is hinged separately uh, than the bench. You don't have to pull the whole bench up to to uh, empty out your sharps and trash. Yeah, and it's right where you need it. It's great. We got storage under the CPR seat, multiple different drawer configurations. So they've really thought a lot about uh, their interior. Yeah, looking at looking at the city of Detroit, it's really if you look through <clears throat> most of this truck, uh, it, there's there's pretty much 
I don't, there's not a lot of standards that are in this. They've gone through and really made it theirs and uh, worked with Braun and Kodiak to, to design something that they are, that's really useful for them. And that's the key, right? The customization, the quality, uh, the durability, and uh, standing behind the product.